we're going to show you how it's possible for the soul to exist and without any appeal to faith or miracles, but by utilizing nothing but logic, reason, and mathematics. Hyperionism absolutely rejects faith, miracles, and an external God. We are concerned with purely rational and mathematical truth. We don't pick and choose what we want to be true. We understand reality as it is in itself, objectively as it truly is. Remember to always keep an open mind and examine everything with reason regardless of your personal beliefs, opinions, or biases. We will now show how the existence of the mind, the soul, is possible. An in-depth explanation would take an immense amount of time and it would include philosophy and mathematics that is well beyond the average viewer. For this reason, keep in mind that what follows is an extremely shortened and simplified version of the explanation and it's restricted to the two-dimensional plane. Its purpose is to give you an understanding of how it's possible for the soul to exist and why it necessarily exists in the specific way that it does. Remember that we use the word mind and soul interchangeably. They're the same concept. And as we've shown in other videos, the mind, the soul, is a completely mathematical entity defined by Euler's formula. We will now show why this is true. We first begin with the principle of sufficient reason, which states, for everything that exists, there exists a sufficient reason why it is thus and not otherwise. In other words, for everything that exists, there is a reason why it exists that way. You can't have anything that happens for no reason at all. Ultimately, everything must have a reason, even if that reason is immensely complicated. For example, if you found a ball on the floor, there exists a reason why there is a ball in that particular place. Maybe a kid put it there, or a dog dropped it. Whatever the case may be, there's some reason why it's there and not somewhere else. It didn't just miraculously appear there without any reason at all. Everything in reality has a reason for why it is the way it is. We are going to refer to the principle of sufficient reason as the PSR for short. Now, you use the PSR constantly without realizing it. Any time you try to think of a reason for something, you're using the PSR, which states that everything has a reason. If you try to think of a reason that the PSR is wrong, you're trying to find a reason why the PSR is wrong, which is to use the PSR, which states that everything has a reason. So you can't try to think of a reason why the PSR is wrong without using the PSR in the process and thereby affirming its validity. Anyone who tries to give reasons why the PSR is wrong is absurd as this is a self-defeating act. This shows that they have absolutely no understanding of what the PSR is because as soon as someone tries to give a reason that it's wrong, they're actually using it. Furthermore, if the PSR were false, any reasons used to show that it was false would automatically be false themselves since their coherency and their truth value depends on the PSR being true. And if you simply state that the PSR is wrong, you're saying that things can have no reason whatsoever. And if that's your position, you're literally insane and there's no point in having a conversation with you because you've literally rejected reason. We all have to agree that things have a reason for their existence in order to be able to have a rational discussion. If we don't start there, it's no longer a rational discussion and it's just insane nonsense. We begin with the principle of sufficient reason. It's really simple, it's reason itself. Everything that exists must have a reason why it is the way it is instead of it being a different way. Now keep this in mind, as we'll show that the soul exists necessarily by the PSR. Euler's formula is the governing equation for the soul. Now take a look at its graph. Euler's formula describes a point traveling in this circular trajectory. 
As this flowing point travels around the circle, its position takes on different values. Now, a sol is not just one flowing point, but instead it's a collection of all possible flowing points, and hence every point has its opposite. The average across a flowing point's trajectory is exactly zero. The same is true for any other flowing point, no matter the frequency with which it's associated. A sol is a collection of every possible flowing point, hence every possible frequency, and the total result of all these points taken together results in net zero. A sol is defined by perfect zero. At any location on its trajectory, a flowing point has a specific value, but the average across every location on its trajectory is zero. These flowing points necessarily generate sine and cosine waves, so a sol is a complete collection of sine and cosine waves of every possible frequency, and for every flowing point, for every wave, the total result nets out to zero. A sol is a collection of every possible flowing point, and the total result of all these points taken together results in zero. A sol is defined by perfect zero. This is a completely rational, mathematical definition of the sol. It's a collection of all possible flowing points following the circular trajectory defined by Euler's formula, generating all possible frequencies. The mind, the sol, is a net zero. It contains all possible frequencies, yet is zero in total. It's a frequency singularity, a self-contained, autonomous, eternal Fourier frequency domain. The mind, the sol, is zero. Keeping this in mind, let's return to the principle of sufficient reason. By the PSR, everything that exists must have a sufficient reason for why it exists in the way that it does. The PSR also states that if something has a sufficient reason for its existence, and there is no sufficient reason preventing it from existing, then it must exist. The reason that it's possible for zero to exist in the way that it does is because it is perfectly nothing. Thus, zero, as we have just defined it, can and must exist because it doesn't need anything to exist. It has a sufficient reason for its existence, and there is no sufficient reason to prevent its existence. Zero is perfectly nothing, and therefore nothing can stop it from existing, because it is nothing. It's zero. Since a sol is perfectly zero, that means that nothing can stop it from existing, and therefore it must exist. It has always existed and will always exist. You cannot prevent nothing from having existence. It's eternal void. By the principle of sufficient reason, zero, nothingness, is the only thing that can possibly and must exist. Nothing else is possible because it would require something to get it going. A soul itself is necessary, uncreated, eternal, and indestructible, as it's defined by perfect zero. Furthermore, if one zero is possible, then of course there's nothing to prevent more than one zero from existing. Therefore, a multitude of zeros are possible. This is how we arrive at a multiplicity of zeros, an infinity of souls. By the PSR, zero can and must exist. Souls are zero. Therefore, souls can and must exist. We have shown that by the principle of sufficient reason that zero can and must exist, and that a sol, as a collection of all possible flowing points, following the Eulerian trajectory we defined, is zero. Philosophers have asked why there is something rather than nothing. In fact, there is something purely because, mathematically, something is also nothing. If this weren't true, the universe could not exist. There is a sufficient reason why a non-zero cannot exist, because it requires something. A zero universe does not. Nothing can prevent nothing from existence precisely because nothing requires nothing.
To make a non-zero universe, you would need to create net positive energy out of nothing, and this is a violation of the law of conservation of energy, and a logical impossibility by the PSR. You might be wondering, what about other types of zeros? That is, why a zero that's a collection of flowing points as we've just defined it? This is an excellent question. Not just any zero is possible, but only zeros that do not violate the PSR. So let's say that you had a zero that did not contain a collection of flowing points. Would this zero be possible? Yes, it would, but since it's empty instead of full, it has no effect. It's total non-existence. It doesn't do anything, so it's completely meaningless and non-existence. Similarly, if you had a zero full of unmoving static still points, nothing would ever happen, so it has absolutely no effect whatsoever. Only zero that is full of points in motion is life. These flowing points are the pulse of reality. Without them, or if they were unmoving, life could not exist and everything would be a total dark room where nothing would ever happen. Zero, as a container of flowing points defined by Euler's formula, which is necessarily possible by the principle of sufficient reason since it nets out to zero, is the only arrangement that is both possible and living. Another question you might have is why Euler's formula? Why not some other formula or trajectory? Euler's formula and the circle it defines is the only one possible by the PSR. Now first, we have to be clear that the circle we're talking about doesn't take up any physical space. It's not in space and time. It exists purely as mathematical information. If you have trouble understanding what that means, imagine it like computer code. You can have computer code that describes a circle, but that does not form a physical circle. So when we're speaking about Euler's formula, flowing points, and Euler circles, this has nothing to do with physicality. This is pure mind, pure thought. It's pure mathematical structure. So, why this particular shape and formula? Remember that everything must be compatible with the PSR. This means there is no room for any random, sudden, discontinuous, arbitrary changes, as there would be no sufficient reason for this. This would be like a miracle, something happening for no reason. Everything must be continuous and consistent. So for example, this rules out a square since there would be no sufficient reason for the flowing point to suddenly change its trajectory. A straight line is ruled out because this privileges the first point. A circle privileges no points as every point is equidistant from the center. The only trajectory that is continuous with no jumps where no location is privileged over the other is the circle. Finally, a question that some very astute viewers may wonder is, why the Euler circle? Why not a regular real numbered equivalent, that is, one without imaginary numbers? Reality must be complete, consistent, and stable under any valid transformations. It must always be equal to zero, and it cannot contain any kind of errors or flaws whatsoever. If it did, reality would collapse and it couldn't exist. If we took a regular circle and squared it, meaning if we squared every point on the circle, all of the negative numbers would turn positive because the square of a negative number is a positive number, and half of existence would be wiped out. This shows that a real numbered regular circle contains a major flaw, and a reality like that could never exist. It would be like a computer program that has a fatal error in the code, and so it crashes. Since the circle generated by Euler's formula resides in the complex plane, it remains stable under such a transformation, since the square roots of negative numbers are imaginary, and the square roots of imaginary numbers are complex, and the complex plane contains all such numbers. It's like the perfect computer code that contains no errors or flaws and can never crash no matter what. To reiterate, souls 
minds exist because they are perfectly compatible with the principle of sufficient reason. Their existence is necessary. It would be impossible for them not to exist. Only a complete, consistent, eternal, indestructible system guided by Euler's formula whose net result is equal to zero at all times is compatible with the principle of sufficient reason. The particular arrangement of a soul's internal mathematical patterns can vary as long as they always net out to zero and never violate the PSR. This is how diversity is possible. Reality is composed of nothing but sine and cosine waves, and a flowing point traveling in an Eulerian trajectory generates a perfect sine and cosine. This is a reality of mind of thought, and the interactions of the waves with all of the other minds in existence is what gives rise to the domain of space-time. Space-time is not composed of matter. The idea of matter is an illusion. Instead, space-time is composed of the mental energy interactions of all the minds in existence. You are a soul, a mind, a mathematical entity. You are a system of pure mind that exists outside of space-time. You're not your body. A mind simply links to a body in order to directly interact within the domain of space-time. We have shown you the soul using logic, reason, and mathematics. There is no external god, as this is a violation of the PSR. As we'll show in further videos, you are a self-solving system of mathematics, and when your internal energy patterns are optimized, you become a god. We are the Absolute. We are reality. Hyperians are those that have become conscious of what they truly are. We are the opening eye of the universe. We are the voice of reality. Listen. Ad Astra. To the stars. Make sure you like and subscribe and check out my Patreon for hidden videos. So the Hyperion system is all about fulfilling your potential. It's not about sitting on your ass. So if you want freedom just to sit on your ass and look at Facebook memes all day, then the Hyperion system is not for you. But if you want freedom to build a new world where you can fulfill your potential and have the time and opportunity and resources to learn, explore, and grow, explore this reality, explore others, explore your own mind, and to become the best version of yourself that you can be, then that is what a Hyperion system is, and that is what we're building. You guys on Patreon have been absolutely amazing and the community there is awesome. If you're not on there yet, make sure you check it out. It's because of you that I'm able to make these videos. A new world is right around the corner. Thank you for your support, my friends.